Hey what's going on guys, Chris here, welcome back to Ghost of Tsushima and today let's take a look at the lethal difficulty. It's one of my favorites so far in the game, I've started the whole playthrough just on this difficulty alone and it definitely feels like the game has changed a bit for the better as combat feels way more satisfying now. You're basically one hit away from death most of the time but so is the enemy which makes your abilities and even more so your katana hits feel more impactful than ever before, which is why in this video I also want to cover some of the biggest tips and tricks you should know if you also want to become a master at it. So let's jump right into it with everything you need to know and as always a thumbs up on this video would also be super appreciated. Anyway here are a few things you need to know about this difficulty level before jumping into it. Of course first of all it makes enemies way more aggressive in combat as well as making their damage deal way more than ever before. As a result and in order to compensate for that your own sword also feels sharper than ever before as well as the more impactful and what this means is basically most of the kills including you are no more than one or two hits away most of the time. This also means that as a result some of the stats and gear priority in the game is going to now shift compared to some of the previous difficulties we've talked about. So while HP was a sure way to bring up your survivability in the past, now even at the maximum amount of HP in the end game you can still get one or two shot by even the most regular and basic of enemies so that is why you're going to want to focus on other parts of your build and the ones that you should focus on are all the ones that might provide distractions or disable access enemies when possible and even more so when you get overwhelmed by big groups which also brings us at the first one that does that perfectly well and that is of course some of the ghost weapons that you will have access to quite early on and the first one and by far my favorite is also the kunai which is the best choice when it comes to breaking enemies guards instantaneously so if you're just starting out, definitely make sure to invest some points into those hidden blades and serrated blades to both throw more kunais as well as deal double the damage that they do by default. While you're at it, I would also upgrade the carry capacity so you don't run out of them that easily, you can do so at any trapper and it's definitely worth it to check out the rushing water crossing, that is a great location to get a ton of predator hides. You can equip a charm of Inari, go over there, there's a couple of bears that constantly spawn so you can go in loot the bears, get yourself killed and do this on repeat until you get hundreds of these so you can go at the back at the trapper and upgrade everything. Also make sure that you upgrade the arrows since the bow and the arrow is also going to be a very important point for your build since again you are going to want to disable as many enemies from the distance before they actually get close to you. The second stat that's very important to also prioritize is your resolve mirror and the reason for that is because it does two very amazing things things. First of all, it's going to provide some healing, yes healing is still important since most of the attacks will take like 3 quarters of your HP, so this means that at least in theory you can heal through one of them and kinda have more survivability, or at the very least you're going to have enough for that iron will that gets you back into the fight later on into the game. Second of all, it's because you're going to want to have as much resolve as possible to use those instant unblockable attacks such as the heavenly strike that you can get very early on in the game. So since enemies die in one or two hits anyway, there is a good way to start with this. You can for example go against an enemy, begin with the heavenly strike. This will do two things. First it will take a huge chunk of damage off of their HP and second of all usually also disable their defenses which means that you can quickly follow up with a regular attack to finish them up. I know that this is the complete opposite of what we usually do on the other difficulties but this is is actually a good strategy that works very well on the lethal difficulty. Otherwise, if you have enough room and there's not many enemies around you to pose a threat, you can go in the normal way and break the guards the normal way and then follow up with other types of attacks. Which also brings us of course to the next section on the list and that is of course what types of other armor and gear pieces you should prioritize. And this brings us to the first one that actually shifts quite a bit and I covered this a couple of days ago when I made a top tier of the best armor set in the game. Um, one of them was the Kensei armor which I didn't rank too high but that was up until the hard difficulty. On the lethal difficulty this basically becomes one of the best ones in the game since it buffs exactly the stats and the abilities that you will need to disable these enemies in the first place. And that is of course the fact that it provides exactly that resolve gain bonus that I was talking about. You cannot get enough of this on the lethal 
initial difficulty so this is a sure way to buff that as well but it's an also excellent build if you want to go with something that completely buffs up your ghost weapon damage especially when it comes to pure ghost weapon damage with the kunais this is a perfect build for that but also for the other debuffs that you can just spread around and this is going to make it very easy for you to survive multiple enemies when they start attacking you this is also the reason for why i recommend combining with this armor set anything like a charm of ryujin a charm of hidden blades both of which provide more kunais when it comes to the combat you could also go in with a charm of silence or if you didn't reach that point yet when you finished all of the inari shrines you can get a charm of resolve which is really easy to get that's going to buff up your resolve gain on top of the one that you already get from the armor and from here on you can just go in with other charms of advantage or anything else that you might find useful in the combat and depending on the enemies that you might be fighting another great armor set that becomes even more useful is also the gosaku armor you can go in and take this and even though i did pick this as the number one choice in the previous tier list up until the hard difficulty this actually becomes even more important now so basically since enemies are no more than two hits away from death this means that their defenses are now the biggest obstacle against that and the gosaku armor is specially made to break those obstacles as fast as possible and take the enemies down since the remaining hp isn't that great to begin with now we've talked about gear and stat priority let's also talk about some of the combat tips and tricks you should know both for enemies as well as for bosses let's start with the enemies and the first one is the spearman which is by far the most annoying on the lethal difficulty specifically because because many of their attacks actually have auto tracking baked into them which means that they constantly stick to Jin despite your best efforts to dodge away and sometimes you can't even dodge since now they are more eager to use them. So against Spearman you have to pay attention to two types of attacks. The first one is the thrust with the spear which has really really long range so don't hesitate to dodge away even if they're further away because they have a really long reach with that. Second of all soon after that thrust they usually immediately follow up with a ground sweep like this one which is more than enough to almost always one shot your character case in which immediately follow up with a dodge after that i would also pay close attention to this perk right here since it makes Jin automatically parry any incoming attack with the spear as long as you're in the middle of an attack yourself during that wind stance so this is basically how you want to do it you're going to want to constantly be in the middle of an attack and it doesn't matter if a spearman attacks you since you're going to automatically block that but otherwise take enemies from afar or at the very least try to stay further back and only jump in when they are at the end of their attack cycle for the shield man it kind of goes the same they also have an attack pattern of about three consecutive attacks so they sometimes might start with regular attacks with the sword immediately follow up with red shield attacks and then follow up with some more sword attacks so in this case you might want to be the first one to initiate the fight in of course that water stance and you can start the triangle sequence of attacks that completely disables their shields so that you can quickly finish off with an attack for the rest of the enemy types it's almost as before especially against brutes you're going to constantly try to disable them with triangle and then take them down quickly with a heavy heavenly strike attack or other types of attacks to disable them completely it's even easier now since they also die in just a couple of more shots so i would even say that they're easier to take on than in the previous difficulties for the swordsman i would pay close attention to the ones with the two-handers since even though their attacks are slow they can almost one shot you even at max hp so in that case maybe dodge to the side that what i found to be the best solution since they kind of swing left to right then right to left and they kind of do this switch between them about four or five times so in that case dodge once do an attack and you should be able to disable them with the triangle really easily but this brings us to the boss enemies which now are way more challenging than ever before since many of their attacks will completely one shot your character so here's a few things that you should know about that you will want to alternate between dodging and parrying almost every attack so if you dodge too frequently or if you parry too frequently eventually the boss will switch up their attacks and it will make it impossible to block incoming attacks like for example 
if they do normal attacks and you keep blocking, they will eventually switch to red ones that you have no option but to dodge away unless you want to completely die. Another one is this long chain of regular attacks that many of the bosses will do. In this case, you're going to want to do a parry, sometimes between the second and the third attack in the chain that makes them overshoot a little bit like this, where they have their backs exposed to you. This also means you can quickly follow up with regular square attacks that will completely take the boss by surprise and you can deal some damage before they turn around and start parrying and dodging again. And yes, you can deal damage against enemies even if you didn't broke their guards yet when you get them in these kinds of positions where they aren't in the proper angle to defend themselves, like for example being from the side or from the back. Another one is for example with these red attacks, usually many of the bosses follow up with another attack immediately after that. So for example they might start with a red attack, then follow up immediately after that with another one, which is the second one that takes most people by surprise. So you might want to do two dodges when you see the first one, just in case they might follow up with another one. And so is the case if they just follow up with a regular one, as that can be the case as well. From here on, it's just a matter of disabling those defenses, which is why I said Gosaku and the bludgeoning charms are way more important now than ever before, since it now takes way less hits to kill the enemies, the only thing that stands in your way to that is the guard meter. And the guard meter is still OP for bosses in the lethal difficulty, which is why you're going to want to focus on that guard break damage as much as possible. Now for the rest of the things regarding the combat, like some of the other tools, or for example the stealth option, I didn't cover these since these I didn't notice them to change too much compared to how it was before. Now this might be just me, but I did notice that some of the enemies might have better detection on the lethal difficulty, but it wasn't like a major drastic change compared to what it was before, to the point that it's still really easy to exploit the AI. So in that regard, stealth is still a very good option for combat and even more so, maybe even more important now, since it's way better to disable as many enemies as possible before you get overwhelmed. But otherwise, these were the biggest tips and tricks when it comes to mastering lethal. Let me know down below how many of you guys started a brand new playthrough on the lethal difficulty or even more so how many of you are planning to do so maybe once we might get a new game plus. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.